What is up YouTube, XX Solutions here, and today I am bringing you another video, and this is on how to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi. So what is RetroPie? Well, RetroPie is basically a emulation station that allows you to play Game Boy Advance games, SNES games, NES games, and all of the classics that you would have heard of. Now, I think this is great because you don't actually need all of the old consoles that are quite rare these days, and you know, they're quite hard to get hold of. So by using a Raspberry Pi and using an emulator, I think it's perfect because the Raspberry Pi is a very small size and they even have different models for, you know, smaller Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. So I think this is absolutely awesome and I thought I'd share with you guys. I am using the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. So you can use different models. Raspberry Pi 2 is the one I have and I've had for a while. So obviously I'm going to use that. But if you do have another model such as the third generation or even the first generation, this will still work. But bear in mind the performance performance may vary. You're also going to need a micro SD card. Now you should have one if you already have a Raspberry Pi. This can vary from four gigabytes all the way up to 128 and more. For this tutorial, I'm simply going to be using a four gigabyte memory card as I'm not going to be using it after this tutorial because I have a 64 gig memory card that I store all of my games and use RetroPie on. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a four gig card. You're also going to need a controller to play the games. I'm using a wired Xbox One controller. You can use a DualShock controller or even the 8-bit DO controllers like the NES and SNES controllers and stuff like that. But basically a controller that supports USB. Now you're also going to need a wireless keyboard or wired keyboard so we can actually type some commands in later on the video and connect to a wireless network and stuff like that. So you're going to need a keyboard of some sort even if you have to use it for two seconds just to set it up and that's fine. You can just plug in a USB keyboard and that will work just fine. You're going to need a USB stick. Now the USB stick is not compulsory. You don't have to have one but it's a much easier process for later when I show you how and what we're doing with it. It basically just loads all of the ROMs in separate folders and sorts everything out for us instead of doing it manually. So if you do have a memory stick lying around be sure to grab that up for this video and last but not least you're going to want either an ethernet cable connected to your network or a wi-fi dongle now in my case i'm using a wi-fi dongle just because i have one spare and it's very small and i use it on my raspberry pi so if you do have a little wi-fi dongle lying around be sure to connect that also to your raspberry pi but if not then you can just use a ethernet cable so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to retropi.org and you can scroll down and see some different examples of what it looks looks like if you want but we're going to go ahead and click on download scroll down and you'll see two different images one is for the raspberry pi 0 and 1 model and the other is for 2 and 3 now if in a later time this is changed then obviously change it depending on what model you have for me i'm using the raspberry pi model 2 as i said earlier so i'm going to click this button and i'm going to save it to my desired location which will be the desktop and hit save this is 602 megabytes so it may take a while depending on what your connection is but just be patient and wait for it to download okay so once it's downloaded Loaded, we're going to go ahead and simply extract this file once the file is extracted we're going to go ahead and plug our sd card into our computer and we're going to go ahead and open sd formatter now the links will be in the description below so be sure to go over there and download that i do recommend this program as it basically just deletes everything off the sd card even the unknown petitions and stuff like that so go ahead open this and select your sd card now if you don't know which drive letter it is you can go ahead and open the file explorer and you can see that I have my boot E so I'm going to go to drive and select E and then I'm going to select the volume label as RetroPie. Go ahead and hit format, hit OK, OK once again and now the drive format is completed. So now what we're going to do is open Win32 Disk Manager. Again the links are in the description below so be sure to install these programs before you proceed. Select the device once again so mine is letter E. Open the folder and find where your image file that you extracted earlier is so it's on my desktop and then simply choose the disk image file. Hit open and then hit write. It will basically prompt you saying, are you sure? Hit yes. It's going to take a while, so just be patient. Okay guys, so the disk image has successfully been written. We can hit okay and hit exit on the application. We can now simply eject the SD card and plug it directly into our Raspberry Pi. As you can see, we are brought to a welcome screen and says one gamepad detected. That is because my Xbox One wired controller is connected to the Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and hold 
the A button on your device and now we're going to bind each key. Now as you can see RetroPie has now successfully been installed but it's pretty bland and we don't have anything on it. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to configure a few things so that we can use SSH and connect to our network and also fix the black bars that you can see either side of the screen. So go ahead and press A to go into configuration, go down to Wi-Fi and simply press A. Now this is where your Wi-Fi dongle and also your Bluetooth keyboard or wired keyboard comes in handy. So what we're going to do is hit enter on our keyboard and we're now going to choose our wireless network. You can see it says type in the password so you just simply type in the password to your network and hit enter. As you can see we now have a current IP address that ends in 0.33. So now we can hit escape until we're back to the configuration page. Once inside here we're also going to enable SSH so simply go up to Raspberry config and hit A. And then we're going to go down to number five interfacing options and hit A again. Then we go down to SSH and it says, would you like to enable SSH? So we're obviously going to be hitting yes. Now that SSH is enabled, we can hit escape until we've completely exited that. And last but not least, I'm going to change the theme to something a little bit promising. You can keep it or change it to whatever you like, but I like just changing it to the pixel theme that I think makes it look much more retro and looks unique. So again, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to be installing number five, which is pixel. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that it's going to install a couple of things. We can go ahead and press escape a couple of times until we're back at the configuration page again. We're going to press start on our controller and you'll see a few options. If we go down to UI settings, go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see theme set. I'm going to change this to pixel and then I'm going to press B. As you can see, the theme has now been applied. So the next thing you're going to want to do is grab that empty USB, plug it into your PC and simply format it. Make sure to format the file system type to FAT32 and simply click start. I've named mine Retro just so I don't get confused between the RetroPie and the SD card. Go ahead and open the USB stick and we're going to create a directory called RetroPie. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and eject the USB and simply plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Now, once you've plugged it in, leave it for about one minute. Now, if you have an LED indicator on your memory stick, you'll see that it will be flashing. So just leave it and it will basically turn off once it's been completed. But it's basically initializing all of the folders and directories to be set inside of the USB stick and makes things a lot easier. If you don't have an LED light, that's fine. Just leave it for around one minute. And after one minute, you can simply eject it and put it back into your PC. Once you've plugged it back into your PC, we can go ahead and open it. And as you can see, we have a folder called BIOS, Configs and ROMs. You go inside ROMs, you can see that we have lots of different platforms such as Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, MAME and many, many more. So we can go ahead and download a ROM of your choice. So if you go ahead and go to emuparadise.me, this is where you can get a bunch of old ROMs from. They're free, they're easy to download, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So I'm going to go to ROMs, most popular, and we're going to install an SNES ROM. I'm going to be installing Super Mario World USA. Again, all of these are region free, so it doesn't matter which ROM you put in. Go down to download links and simply click download. Scroll down again and hit on download once more and it will prompt you to save to a desired location i'm just going to save it to the desktop for ease of access and now what we can do is go inside of the snes folder and simply drag and drop the winrar archive inside of the folder once we've done that we can go ahead and eject the usb again and plug it back into our raspberry pi so once the memory stick is inside of the raspberry pi what we're going to do is press start go down to quit and restart emulation station as you can see on the home screen we have the configuration page and we also have super nintendo if we hit a on it you can see our rom has been loaded and we can fill up a bunch of roms in this directory and have lots of games so that's pretty cool indeed there's one last thing i want to show you guys and it really irks me and I'm not sure why this is not disabled by default. But as you can see, we have black bars either side of the screen. So to fix that, simply go over to your computer and we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to be using a program called Putty. Simply download that, also be in the description below. And we're going to copy the IP address that we saw earlier on the Wi-Fi page as mine ended in 33. So simply type in the local IP address and hit open. It will give you a warning, just hit yes. So by default, the username is called Pi and the password by default is Raspberry. As you can see, we are now logged in through SSH and we can now proceed to fix the black bar. So what you're going to want to do is type in sudo nano 
forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt and you'll be inside of this text document come down to where you see the disable overscan simply get rid of the hashtag and make sure that disable underscore overscan is set to one press ctrl x to save hit y on your keyboard and hit enter once we've done that, we can reboot from SSH, so sudo reboot, and that will simply reboot the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, the RetroPie logo has come up and we have no black bars anymore. So that is pretty cool. Obviously, if you have any issues, then be sure to Google it. But this fixed it for me. I'm not sure why it's not enabled by default. But again, just follow that guide and you can fix your black bar issue. So now what you can do is simply unplug the USB as we will not be using it anymore. If you do want to install some new ROMs, what we can... So if you want to install ROMs for the future without using the USB, we can go over to the PC and open the File Explorer. Go up here and type in backslash backslash and then the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. You can see we're now connected to the Raspberry Pi. Go inside of ROMs and we have every single folder like so. So we installed Super Mario Bros earlier so if you go inside of the SNES folder you can see we have that on there. What you would do is simply download a ROM of your choice and simply drag and drop it. It might take a while depending on how big the game is and that's how you install the ROMs. Make sure that you reboot emulation station every time you install a ROM so it will initialize the process and actually will pick the game up. So that is pretty much it guys i'm gonna go ahead and load super mario world just to show you that it does work you can also configure your controller overclock the raspberry pi and change all of the different settings and load and save states and stuff like that but that's obviously personal preference so i'm gonna go ahead and choose one player and as you can see mario and as you can see super mario bros is working perfectly fine so that is pretty much it guys i hope i've helped you in a way comment rate subscribe and all that good stuff and i'll see you in the next one peace